Welcome to Brunswick Beat. Brunswick County's only television news show brought to you by the Brunswick Beacon. I'm Rachel Johnson. And I'm Stacy Manning. As she headed north to make a more memorable landfall, Hurricane Sandy's visit near Brunswick County this past weekend brought minimal damage. Emergency Services Director Anthony Marzano said other than a couple of towns with possible beach erosion issues, he is not aware of any structural damage. Two weekend events were postponed, including Holden Beach's Festival by the Sea. It's been rescheduled for November 17th and 18th. The Brunswick County Country Music Fall Festival, originally planned for last Saturday at Planet Fun in Shalote, has postponed until this Saturday, November 3rd. North Carolina Insurance Commissioner Wayne Goodwin has ordered a hearing on the request to raise homeowners' insurance rates. Insurance companies have requested an average increase of 17.7% statewide, but the proposed hike for Brunswick County and surrounding areas would be about 30%. Goodwin says those proposed rates seem to be excessive and unfairly discriminatory. The hearing is scheduled for 10 a.m. June 3rd at 430 North Salisbury Street in Raleigh. It is open to the public. An election official says there are no problems with voting machines, but some local residents have complained to the Beacon about problems with early voting. They said machines showed them voting for opposite candidates rather than the ones they said they have voted for. Check out this week's Beacon for details on voters' complaints and a response from the county's Board of Elections. With the general election fast approaching next Tuesday, November 6, learn more about who to vote for, Election coverage, write-ups, and local candidates, including judicial candidates and those running for Brunswick County School Board, are in this week's edition of The Beacon. There are also stories about North Carolina General Assembly candidates. A complete listing may be found online at brunswickbeacon.com. Around 6.46 a.m. on Tuesday, October 30th, a single vehicle wreck on U.S. 17 claimed the seventh life on Brunswick County roadways during October. Levi Sovey, 35, of Leland, was driving a white Suburban in the northbound lane. He was in the construction zone near Goodman Road, just south of Leland. His vehicle overturned after he apparently overcorrected by pulling the wheel to the right, then immediately back to the left, causing him to lose control. He was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected and pronounced dead at the scene. Lock your car doors. That is a message local law enforcement would like to spread. Locking your car doors prevents potential thefts from occurring by creating a hindrance to a would-be burglar. A recent rash of car break-ins in the Carolina Shores area has residents paying closer attention and law enforcement spreading the word about locking your car doors. Lakeisha Stanley and her family are happy in their new Habitat for Humanity home. The dedication of the Brunswick County Habitat for Humanity 40th home took place Tuesday at the family's new home on Acres Lane near Carolina Shores. The town donated the property for the three-bedroom home where Stanley now lives with her grandmother and six-year-old daughter. Retha Rust's service to students and families of Brunswick County Schools spans 37 years. In addition to many years as a classroom teacher and computer support specialist, Russ has served as assistant principal at Southport Elementary and Lincoln Elementary before taking the reins at Lincoln four years ago. Last week, she was named Brunswick County Schools 2012-2013 Principal of the Year. The weekend wedding of an Indiana couple almost got rained out by Hurricane Sandy, but locals were there to help with an indoor wedding and reception. Instead of the beach wedding that Natalie Gilbert and Jeremy Palin had planned, they were married inside a relative's vacation house in Ocean Isle Beach. The ceremony Saturday was followed by an indoor reception provided at Twin Lakes Restaurant in Sunset Beach. This month, The Beacon celebrates 50 great years serving Brunswick County as the most comprehensive news source for our community. On November 15th, our readers are invited to join in honoring our past and celebrating our future. From 4 to 6 p.m., you're encouraged to stop by The Beacon office at 208 Smith Avenue in Shalote. We're across the street from the post office. If you come by, you'll have a chance to get to know the people who work at The Beacon, take a walk down memory lane, and like all good celebrations, be treated to music, refreshments, cake, and more. If you're a former Beacon employee from any time, please join us and share your stories and memories about working for your community newspaper. There will be a brief ceremony which will begin at 4.15, but you can stop by any time between 4 and 6 on November 15th. For the past year, we have been taking a look back on our community's past with our Looking Back series. This week's installment covers the years 2003 through 2005. You can find all these stories and much more inside this week's Beacon, available on newsstands now.
Welcome to the Beacon Sports Report. South Columbus scored 21 points in the first quarter and held off a furious second half rally by West Brunswick as the Stallions knocked off the Trojans 27-14 in a critical conference showdown Friday night in Shalotte. The Trojans, winners of their last five games, were guaranteed a share of the Waccamaw 2A-3A conference crown as they entered the season's final week as the league's only unbeaten squad. A West victory would have ensured the school's first outright conference championship since before the turn of the new millennium. West entered the finale with one game advantage over South Columbus and East Bladen, but saw its chances of maintaining its perch alone atop the standings vanished after its loss to the Stallions and East Bladen's 7-6 victory over North Brunswick. Each team completed the regular season with one loss in conference play. The Trojans began the state playoffs with a home game on Friday night. The South Brunswick High School boys soccer team has won the Waccamaw Conference Championship. The Cougars beat Whiteville 5-2 on October 24th, clinching at least a tie for the championship. The Cougars won the title outright the next night by beating West Bladen 10-0. The Cougars finished the conference season with 10 wins, 1 loss, and 1 tie. A local girl and her trainer brought home the ribbons after participating in the Heaven's Horseshoes and Dare to Care for Children fundraiser in late September at Lake Waccamaw Boys and Girls Home. Aubrey Davis, age 9 of Supply, riding her horse Karma, brought home nine first place and one third place ribbons from the events. Davis's trainer, Carter Hewitt of Honolulu Stables in Bolivia, riding her horse Captain, also participated and brought home six first place and three second place ribbons from the event. Read all these stories and see more great photos in this week's sports section of The Beacon. Okay, and Nancy takes very good care of the animals here, and she has a new friend here today, and who is this Nancy? This is Nikita. She was an owner turn in. She was brought in yesterday. She um, is terrified being here. She's a wonderful little lap dog. Um, they said she didn't get along good with other dogs, but she gets along wonderful with other dogs. She seems to get along well with dogs and humans, and mm -hmm. I believe that it says she's part chihuahua. Right. Mm -hmm. So she's a real sweet little girl, and she really wants a new home. So come on out to the Brunswick County Animal Shelter on Green Swamp Road. They're open to the public on Mondays through Saturdays, and there's plenty of other dogs and cats out here who need good homes too. So they would love to see you. They're open to the public every day but Sunday. And thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Laura. And thanks, Nikita. Nikita. Local country musician C.C. Martin will take the stage this Saturday at 4 p.m. in the parking lot of Planet Fun. Martin is the headliner for the Country Music Fall Festival that was originally planned for last weekend. Because of Hurricane Sandy, the festival was moved to this weekend starting at 10 a.m. Music begins at noon. The festival includes vendors, children's activities, and game booths indoors and outdoors. Tickets are $5. Frank Theater's Coastal Stadium 10 in Shalot will have a day of fun and games in celebration of the release of the Disney animated film Wreck-It Ralph. It will be from 1 until 9 p.m. Friday, November 2nd and Saturday, November 3rd. Wreck-It Ralph is the story of Ralph, a villain of the fictional video game Fixed-It Felix. He decides he no longer wants to be the bad guy. He spends the movie trying to become the hero. The movie is rated PG. Throughout the day, there will be costume contests in which participants dress as their favorite video game characters and games such as Disney trivia, a flying disc throw, coloring contest, and more. There will also be a video game tournament. There is no charge to participate in any of the games and contests. Tickets will be available for the movie for the regular price at the theater or online at franktheaters.com or movietickets.com. 
For questions or other information, call Coastal Stadium 10 at 754-3489. A shuckin' good time is just around the bend in Barnum Town. This coming Saturday, November 3rd, Dixon Chapel United Methodist Church will be the site of this Riverfront front Fishing Town's 59th Annual Oyster Roast. The event is from noon to 5 p.m. at the church at 190 Barnum Town Road. The cost is $20 for adults and $8 for children ages 12 and younger. Fish plates and hot dogs will be available for non-oyster lovers. Oyster Roast t-shirts will also be available for sale. Talents of the 6th Annual Habitat Follies are unfolding on stage this weekend to benefit Brunswick County Habitat for Humanity. Performance are at 7.30 p.m. Saturday and 2 p.m. Sunday in Odell Williamson Auditorium at Brunswick Community College. Tickets are $20 for adults and $7.50 for children younger than age 12. For more information, call Habitat for Humanity at 454-0007. Pictures of this weekend's show, including local singers, dancers, and entertainers, are featured on the Be Seen page of this week's Beacon. The Hitmen are coming to Brunswick County. The concert is scheduled for 7.30 p.m. next Thursday, November 8th, at Odell Williamson Auditorium at Brunswick Community College. Doors open at 7 p.m. The 14-year-old seven-piece band is renowned for high-energy dance music. Tickets are $27 for adults, $25 for students and seniors age 65 and older, and $10 for children ages 12 and younger. For tickets, log on to bccowa.com or call the box office at 755-7416. Stage struck players, the youth division of Brunswick Little Theater will present Dorothy Meets Alice starting next weekend. The production is scheduled for 7.30 p.m. November 9th, 10th, 16th, and 17th, and 3 p.m. November 11th and 18th at Playhouse 211 at St. James on North Carolina 211. Ticket prices are $17 for adults, $12 for students, and $6 for children ages 12 and younger. An opening night special Friday, November 9th, will allow one child age 12 or younger to get in free with the purchase of one adult ticket. Call the theater for reservations as seats are limited. For tickets and directions to the theater, go to playhouse211.com. Don't forget to set your clocks back this weekend. Daylight savings time officially ends for another year at 2 a.m. Sunday, November 4th. That's all the time we have for tonight, but you can read all these stories and much more in this week's Beacon. If you have comments or suggestions for us at Brunswick Beat, you can email us at brunswickbeat at brunswickbeacon.com. Don't forget to follow the Beacon on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for Brunswick Beacon. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to tune in next week for a brand new edition of Brunswick Beat, Brunswick County's only television news show. We close out this week's show with more images of the impact of Hurricane Sandy in Brunswick County.